Thanks, Dr. Antman. Um, <coughs> and uh, it's going to be our pleasure tomorrow to present um, a study which is going to look at a PCSK9 monoclonal antibody. This is AMG145. It's an Amgen antibody in patients who are statin intolerant. To provide a little background, as you know, statins are the most currently the most effective agents. We've seen from these trials how effective they are. It's hard to actually add to them. Um, and they reduce cardiovascular risk substantially, probably the most proven method of reducing cardiovascular risk. But unfortunately, somewhere between 10 and 20 percent of patients can either not tolerate statins at all, or they cannot tolerate the higher doses of statins that are needed to achieve the LDL goals that are currently recommended due primarily most of the side effects are muscle-related side effects. The only alternative that these patients have then is a cholesterol absorption inhibitor, azetamide, which is most frequently used after a statin as an alternative, but it only lowers LDL about 18%, and even low-risk patients are unlikely to achieve the current LDL goals. So what we looked at was an alternative medication, which has been shown in humans a number of trials earlier this year, and that is to inhibit a new target called PCSK9. And PCSK9 plays a pivotal role, discovered in 2003, and the genetics and the... Uh, Animal work since 2003 has been dramatic and actually very interesting gain of function and loss of function mutations associated with increased LDL cholesterol and reduced LDL cholesterol and associated cardiovascular events. So PCSK9 has been a very good target to investigate for further LDL reduction. We know that it plays a pivotal role in helping the LDL receptor in controlling intracellular homeostasis as well as plasma LDL cholesterol levels. AMG145 is a fully human monoclonal antibody which binds to PCSK, PCSK9 in the bloodstream and it's the PCSK9 in the bloodstream that binds to the LDL receptor and in turn prevents that LDL receptor from recycling and coming back to the surface of the cell to pull LDL or bad cholesterol out of the bloodstream. In earlier trials published about three weeks ago, uh, in the phase one with AMG145, it was well tolerated. They reduce LDL cholesterol about 64% in healthy subjects and, and up to 81%. And those are patients either on diet or on moderate to high dose statins. So our study objective was to evaluate the safety and tolerability of AMG145 compared to azetamide in a difficult to treat and growing population. These are patients at cardiovascular risk who are unable to tolerate effective doses of statins due to muscle-related side effects. Here is the study design. So to get into the study, they, you had to be an adult aged 18 to 75, and you had to have muscle-related side effects, at least intolerant of one statin or unable to tolerate what would be considered very low doses of statin um, and for the details of the actual entry criteria are in the uh, JAMA paper that will be published simultaneously, and I believe that you have copies or you can obtain copies from the American Heart Association. So once we had the patient population defined, their LDL cholesterols were then based on NCEP, ATP3 criteria. So if you had coronary disease or you were CHD equivalent, you had to have an LDL above 100. If you had moderate risk, an LDL above 130, and if you had low risk, an LDL above 160. There were then five groups, so it was a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized, although ezetimide stratified trial. So one group was the AMG 280 milligrams, given subcutaneous. All the PCSK9 uh, monoclonal antibodies are biologics, and they are given as a small subcutaneous injection, mostly in around the abdomen, and we were testing three doses, that's 280, 350, and 420 milligrams given every four weeks. 
Then there was one group that was randomized to azetamide plus placebo injection, and the other group received azetamide plus AMG 145 at a dose also of 420 milligrams per deciliter. Here's the baseline characteristics, and <clears throat> average age was around about 60. The LDL cholesterols were actually very high. You're probably not used to seeing trials. These are almost going back 30 years to the pre-statin era, which is obvious because these patients don't tolerate statins well or very low doses. So the mean LDL cholesterol levels were close to 200, 190, much more severe than what you usually see. A large number of these patients had coronary heart disease or were high-risk patients. And in addition, you'll note that 100% of the patients had been unable to tolerate at least one statin. Nearly three quarters of them, roughly 70 to 80% of them, could not tolerate two statins. And a third of them had actually been tried on a third statin and were unable to tolerate that as well. Most of that, you, the statin-related muscle effects were myalgias, where 97% of them had experienced muscle soreness, discomfort when taking statins, and a small number had myositis, and one had actually severe rhabdomyolysis from statin treatment. In terms of the reduction and the measurements of LDL cholesterol were done by reference technique, which is ultracentrifugation, which is a little different from all the previous uh, publications, and this is a little more conservative and more accurate for measuring LDL reductions. If we looked at the zetamide group, you can see a 15%, that's what we expect from a zetamide. If you looked at then the uh, AMG alone, at the 280 milligram going up to 420, it ranged from 40 to 51% decrease, and if you combined a zetamide with the PCSK9 inhibitor, you got a 63% decrease. This doesn't show up really very well, um, but if you look at, this is now calculated LDL cholesterol showing you the effect over time, and you can see that there's a dramatic and maximum reduction at two weeks, much quicker than you see with any other form of lipid lowering treatment for LDL reduction that you get a maximum effect within two weeks and then it's pretty stable for the next tw 10 weeks during which the study lasted. So you look at week four, week eight, and week 12 and you can see, and if you look at the calculated, it's actually a little greater than you would see with the ultracentrifugation. In terms of achieving goal, which was one of our objectives, you can see that you get very few patients 7% of patients on ezetimide got to goal, and that included patients even at low risk, whereas if you added ezetimide together with the PCSK9 inhibitor, 90% of patients got to a goal of less than 100, and even with the drug alone with no ezetimide, you got 60% of patients to a goal of less than 100. If we look at getting to a goal of less than 70, which is where you would want to be with patients in high-risk population, you get zero patients with the zetamide to that goal. You get about 30% if you give the drug alone, 420 milligrams. Remember, the starting LDLs were pretty high, 190. And if you gave ezetimide together with the drug, you got 60% or more to an LDL goal of less than 70, which I think is pretty good figuring you started an LDL of 190. You saw the same effects on other APOB-containing lipoproteins that you would anticipate, but importantly here highlighted is the fact that LP little a also goes down. LP little a, as many of you likely know, is another atherogenic lipoprotein, and of our current treatments, very little reduces LP little a. High-dose niacin has a mild to moderate effect on LP little a, but with the PCSK9 inhibitors, much to all of our surprise when we started on these and looking at the results, is that there is a fairly robust 20 to 30 percent reduction in LP little a. In terms of safety and tolerability, here, this busy slide, and again, I urge you to go to the paper to see 
the details on the safety and tolerability. You can see here that there was not a big difference. Specifically, if you look at the myalgias, you will note that it is really um, fairly well tolerated. Small number of patients had myalgias. Nobody really dropped out of the 12-week trial for this side effect. But compared to azetamide, you're looking at uh, good tolerability. Remember, 100% of these patients had muscle-related side effects going into the trial. There were two patients who had significant CK elevations. They both happened to, one happened to be in placebo, the other on the 350 milligram dose, the 10 times greater than limited normal, and these patients were both well documented as having severe exercise. So in conclusion, in patients with statin intolerance, we achieved LDL reductions in the order of those found with the highest doses of the most efficacious statins. 61% who received AMG plus ezetimide and over 50% in those who received the drug alone. A large number of patients reached the goal of less than 100 and over 60% on the drug alone plus ezetimide achieved the remarkable LDL reduction of less than 70. Uh, we saw reductions in LP little a and with or without ezetimide the drug was well tolerated. Obviously, we need larger slide, uh, studies to confirm this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Stein. To uh, discuss the uh, Gauss paper, we'll call upon Dr. Peter Wilson from uh, the Atlanta VA Medical Center. Uh, thanks very much. So Dr. Stein has just presented uh, results for the Gauss trial. My uh, discussion tomorrow will also include the Rutherford trial and the third trial with PCSK9 uh, monoclonal antibody treatment. And it really comes down to one slide. And this slide will be up for a couple of minutes and it takes a little bit of digestion. And it's the effort to summarize all the presentations uh, that are remarkably similar uh, uh, for this new, mo new treatment modality. So first of all, understand what is PCSK9. It's a chaperone for LDL that improves its efficacy. Uh, and so you really do want, it's been discovered, uh, highlighted especially by Jonathan Cohen and Helen Hobbs' work, um, only five, the last five to 10 years. And we already have new treatment modalities building on this new molecular science. So the Gauss trial, as you can see, has about 150 individuals, statins above goal, LDL above goals, in 200 range, which is really quite high. Statins were not tolerated. They were treated subcutaneously. These are biological agents. They're not pills. They're, they're injections every two to four weeks with five arms in the trial. Uh, Non-HDL, the atherogenic lipid particles, went down minus 40% to 51%. These are at the level of what we see for moderate to high potency statins. Remember, these individuals are only, this is the only treatment they're getting. And a favorable effect, uh, also reduction with LP little a. And then also, as mentioned by Dr. Stein, they were additive to azetamide. On the adverse effects column, myalgies in a, a fraction that sounds similar to what you would get for statins alone, these were statin intolerant patients, and CK in either one or two, interestingly one in the placebo arm, so any, any remote signal even for CK elevations, very high, is something that bears some attention and follow up. Rutherford and, and RN316, you've not seen, but I'm just going to quickly go through similar sorts of designs. 165, as you can see, in Rutherford. Now, these were heterozygous FH, fairly similar to what we heard for Gauss. They were already on stable lipid uh, therapies. LDLs uh, were greater than 100 at the start of the trial. Similar subcutaneous three arms, only uh, focusing on the three arms related to the active molecule. Similar reductions in non-HDL, ApoB, other atherogenic lipid particles, favorable effects, LP little a, no CK signal seen in this uh, trial. And then finally, RN316, 
another in the 130 range in terms of participants, heterozygous uh, familial hypercholesterolemia on statins. This is an intravenous uh, uh, biologics, not subcutaneous, a slightly different schedule, similar dosing effects for multiple arms, uh, very favorable effects. The very lowest dose that they uh, investigated, only 10% lowering, but the highest dose, 50% lowering. Uh, mild effects on HDL cholesterol and triglyceride in the, uh, what we would hope would be favorable directions. Myalgias were present in a fairly low percentage. No CK signal for abnormalities. No antibodies to infusion. This is an issue for biologics. In, uh, in recent FDA hearings, this is uh, potentially something that we need to pay attention to with newer molecules that are being treated, whether there are going to be antibodies. Um, I'd like to see more information for all of these types of molecules, subcutaneous and IV, but we certainly have the information for RN316. And there was some element of dose interruption at the higher doses with this. And then one other slide. So where are we? We have biologics now to treat hypercholesterolemia, uh, subcutaneous or IV. They're effective. They're starting like usual statins or very potent statins. We still need to pay attention to myalgia risk. We haven't seen much so far for liver function abnormalities. We, have, we need more safety data on this. CK elevation, we have a signal in at least one of these trials. Like to see more information for rare events, but something of great concern. And this is just a short list of unanswered issues. What is the long-term efficacy? These were 12-week trials. What is the safety profile when other medicines are on board for these patients? Immunologic issues, for instance, related to antibody uh, development, perhaps, and re-challenge re over time. And we don't have any data for certain subgroups, especially such as children, for whom these molecules really may be of special interest because they're alternatives to high-dose statins. Thank you very much.